but I just know that if I'm not good at something and I'm going to put it off or I have a lot on my plate, just pay the couple whatever hundreds, tens of dollars to just make sure that it's taken care of and your client is taken care of. Because as much yeah. as people say, oh, well, I'm overwhelmed and I booked this many weddings. I'm like, that's not your client's fault. Okay. You take care of your business. You step in as a CEO and do what needs to be done. Sorry. I just got yes. like, I got like, so <laughs> I went straight business minded, but that's just how I think. I'm like, okay, that's not their problem. Like this is a business. Okay. Yeah. This is not like a side little gig. And it's like, oh my gosh, let me wait. Like I paid her $10 to do my photos. I should be patient. Like, no, you are a business. If you're accepting money and you're accepting a lot of money, the least you can do is meet their expectations or supersede them. When I first started my wedding photography business back in 2011, I made just $5,000 in my business. Now I bring in multiple six figures per year while working only 30 hour weeks serving my dream couples. I'm here to help you discover that it's so possible to have what you want, when you want in your business so that you can create the life you've always dreamed of and deserve. Welcome back to another episode of the Shine and Thrive Photography Podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Monica, and today I have an amazing guest, Alora Rochelle, who is also an incredibly talented wedding photographer, and we're chatting all about client experience. We are both so passionate about this topic, and we also both believe that our workflows, like the quality of our systems and our workflows is directly correlated to the quality of our client experience. And so you're going to learn so much about that. You're going to learn on what things can improve their your client experience and also what can take away from it. And you'll also hear us being super passionate about our beliefs in business, but also super giddy and goofy in our conversation, which was such a nice and breath of fresh air for me to be able to podcast with someone and bounce back and forth between each other that way. And it helps that we're also both Enneagram threes. So we literally felt freakishly like we were just like twins and in each other's heads because we got each other so like easily. I don't know how to explain it. You know, when you just click with someone, you just get someone. So that's how we felt. And it was just so fun to chat with her. And a little bit about Alora. She is a wedding photographer and an educator who believes in marketing and growing a successfully aligned business. She is passionate about living a life she loves and helping businesses with their brand positioning, marketing, and systems that bring balance and healthy boundaries. Alora's work has been published in The Knot Magazine, Channel 7, ABC News, Huffington Post, Pop Sugar, Metro Times, and more. When she started, she had a borrowed camera and big dreams, taking her business from $10,000 to $100,000 in just two years. So that is a little bit about Alora, and I hope you enjoy diving into our chat. Alora, welcome to the Shine and Thrive podcast. I am so excited to have you here and even more so excited now that we've been literally chatting for, I don't even know how long, half an hour, just like getting to know each other, shooting the shit, giggling, having some deep and vulnerable conversations right off the oh. bat, which yes. <laughs> to me, at least they were deep and vulnerable to you. You're like, girl, this is like my regular life. Like, what are you talking about? You're doing great, Sarah. Yeah. You're doing the work. Okay. Um, I'm so, <laughs> I'm so honored to be here. This is so great. I've been listening to your podcast since you started it. And um, I can't wait to see what this conversation is going to be. We have, I feel like we just were like instant connection because we're the same Enneagram, but like, it's so weird. Every time you talk, I'm thinking it while you're talking. I'm just like, this is like twin stuff. This is That's weird, awesome. <laughs> but it's cool. <laughs> okay, everybody, guess what Enneagram we both are? Three. <laughs> that's what... <laughs> So we really get each other right off the bat. So that's been really, really fun. Um, okay, Alora. So for us to all get to know you a little bit more right off the bat, let's just do three random facts about you which I hope you have found by searching <laughs> yes. around the room for them. When she asked, she's like, all right, I'm going to give you some facts. And I'm like looking around like, okay, where are they? Where am I going to find these? She's like, why are you looking for them? <laughs> okay, fact number one. I really wanted to be a Disney Channel star, okay? Seeing Demi Lovato and Selena Gomez on Barney was my biggest <laughs> admirable um, 
role. I was like, oh my gosh, I would love to be on Barney and I would love to do the Disney Channel. Like, what is that, that, um, the lightsaber they do when they go, like, dun, 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 dun. Lightsaber? All, if you, if, oh, the wand. Is it a wand? The wand, yes. Okay, well, I went Star Wars for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> But yes, I've always wanted to be like, <laughs> you're watching Disney Channel. But wait, why Barney out of all things? Barney? Because that's, well, I was that old. I think I was four. <laughs> oh my gosh, I remember Barney. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember watching Selena on Barney being like, oh, how cute is she? Like, I was five. I don't, I don't know why I thought that. But yeah. Anyway, um, second fact, my favorite food is ramen. I don't know if anybody even knows that. I feel like I talk about it so much. But if you... <laughs> don't follow my Instagram, then be wowed because my favorite food is ramen. Um, so what's your go-to ramen order? Okay. So there is, it's like Hakata Takansu and it's at this place called the Surfing Turtle and it's been closed for renovations for two months. And oh. your girl has just been <laughs> waiting on the news to just tell me when I can have my Are you in withdrawal? <laughs> yes, kind of. I was like, is this what it's like when people are getting off of addiction? Because it's not okay. <laughs> it's, this is hard. <laughs> <laughs> um okay so hobby hmm i actually like interior design like just for fun like i have friends that are always like oh my gosh can you like draw me a sketch and design my home and i said absolutely i will um here is a notes app image screenshot that i have done of your entire home that i've never seen and i think all of these things look great in it so oh, that's really cool that I, <laughs> well it's something i almost did too for like a job like a business and i was like yeah i'm gonna start this interior design company and then I realized, I was like, Lori, you don't have to have a million businesses. Like, you can, <laughs> but, like, it won't make it – like, it won't be fun anymore. It'll be a business, and, like, I want to keep it fun. So that's something mm, yeah. I need to do. Um, oh, uh, I mean, I'm just going to throw in another one for kicks and giggles. Yeah. This is four, but everyone thinks I'm Filipino, and I'm not, okay? I'm just going to throw this out there. If you see my photograph, <laughs> it's not. Like, I am Korean, Black, and Native American. Okay, just disclaimer. All right, that's I it. I love that. <laughs> You're so smart because you know, I guess, what comments or questions you get. And you're like, well, I'm just going to eliminate that problem by just yes. mentioning this. Right this off is the my bat. correct race. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that is an incredible mix. Like, like seriously, if you guys, when you, when you guys go see her page, I'm by kidding. the way, stunning, absolutely stunning. Stop, get out of here. <laughs> but please tell me more. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh okay well I am so excited to dive in and like chat and get all nerdy about talking business and everything with you um because we haven't done that yet because we were just chatting and kind of getting to know each other shooting shooting the shit um but we're here to talk about client experience uh for photographers and how photographers can really elevate their client experience so I would love to know from you, Alora, how would you personally define a great client experience? So I know there's like customer service and that's kind of like, oh, make sure that their expectations are met and meet, like set the expectations and meet them. But for me, I feel like client experience is having an efficient workflow and also like touch points where they feel like they are seen, they are heard and they feel valued. And I don't know if those are like brand touch points or whatever, but in any way that you can kind of tailor your wedding photography experience to your clients and you're constantly letting them know, hey, I'm here, cannot wait to capture your day. Also, here's a gift. Here's a gift card. Um, here's a date night gift. I don't know, whatever you want to do. Some people say that they don't like doing gifts. I don't know why. It's my love language and I just, oh, I'm obsessed with it. I love finding excuses to make somebody a gift. I just, and then hoping that somebody will give me one in return. But <laughs> um, some people say, well, my client experience, like, um, I don't know, superpower or secret sauce is that I am always available. Like we hop on the phone all the time. We actually, we spend quality time together. We go out to eat. Um, and I also, you can kind of relate this um to your love languages as well and kind of like hone in on that so like if your thing is like quality time or physical touch you greet them with a hug instead of like looking at them and say hey how's it going <laughs> cool so we're gonna have a client meeting and then <laughs> I used to have like I used to go in for hugs and like one client was like whoa <laughs> we don't oh, really I'm, like, I'm so sorry so I like <laughs> do hand, I like do a hand hug and I'm like what which one you know um but everybody's different and so I think it's just really important 
um, by having a really good client experience slash workflow because it's gonna gain that loyalty. So like some people like to shoot the family, like when they get pregnant with their first baby after the wedding or refer them to like other people so that they can do other portrait sessions. So having a really good client workflow, client, client customer service, people are gonna be like, oh my gosh, you need to hire this person. They took such great care of us. We're hiring them for our maternity session. We're hiring them for first year pictures. Personally, I'm not into like lifestyle so much, but I know people that are like, I wanna shoot every milestone that you ever had and also like friends and family. So that's something that's really good if you wanna get that repeat business, definitely find ways and small little touch points where you can go above and beyond. And there's another thing they say is like, oh, under promise and over deliver. But I say, why don't you just promise and then over deliver? So they already set you set the expectation that they're going to have a good experience. But then like you supersede that and they're like, oh, my God, this person said they were going to give it to me, my photos to me in like six weeks and they gave it to me in a week. That's insane. But if you can do that, like do it, you know, um, and just like all those other things. But yes, that is what client experience and workflow means to me. <laughs> I love story. that. No, I love that you've mentioned so many great points. I was like jotting notes so I can like go back to these because I love how right off the bat you said it was about efficient workflow and make them feel seen and heard. And I'm like, I'm like, of course she, she would say that because we are fucking twins over here because <laughs> like, that's literally what I like, I have set up in my business is like, I have these automated questionnaires that are sent out throughout the process before their wedding and throughout it's like, it's automated, but they don't really know that. And kind of like pre, um, what's it called? Expecting what they might be wondering at that time. So let's say like, five months before a wedding day, right? They might be like, hmm, like, is there anything we should be worried? like asking our photographers or anything? We And before they even get the chance to reach out to me, I have already reached out to them. And guess what that does? That creates them feeling like they have one less thing to do on their to-do list because I'm taking care of that for them instead of them being like, okay, I have to put together this email. I don't know what questions to ask, like takes off the burden, right? So I love that you said that. And I love that you also said that, it, like great client experience can look so different for any anyone and any photographer and also any client so like what are some of I guess like what are some of the things that you feel are aligned with you and your clients that you attract that you know help cultivate that strong client experience where they're like oh my gosh you have to hire Alora. Mm, okay, so I like to sprinkle in lots of bonuses. So they know they do not know that they're going to get a client welcome gift that they don't know at the end of the year. If you see my little corner here, these are boxes of like closing gifts, aka their first Christmas gift. And it's going to be like um, a box of prints and just kind of like a thank you custom postcard from me. I am like a freak about brand. Like I'm even wearing my own sweatshirt, yeah. okay? Because Sarah did not tell me. No, just kidding. No, she told me. <laughs> but uh, I, <laughs> I'm a freak about brand, and like my brand being seen as like luxury and just like well, I don't know. And luxury can mean two different things. So some people think, oh, luxury means expensive, and then for me, it's just like that brand consistency. Like this was very intentional and this was very purposeful. So. My client gift um, is kind of a welcome gift. It's like um, I send them a questionnaire once they book with me and say, hey, fill this out. There might be something in the mail. And they're like, oh, my God, fill it out now. So I usually say, would you prefer coffee, candy, chocolate, tea, um, or all of the above, right? And so then I have my VA custom send them a client gift. Um, and, and it has a card that says, Hey, just want to kick off the celebration. Cannot wait to capture your love. Cheers. Right. And so they're like, they always share that on Instagram, tag me and all their friends see that mess. So that's marketing tip. Number one, that costs yeah. me less than a hundred dollars to do. And like I said, your girl's love language is gifts. So <laughs> I, I just, I, I love it. Um, and so the next thing is I've ordered custom, like tissue paper for my brand, custom tape, custom postcards. Oh, is there anything else? I'm going to do custom boxes next year that say my name on it as well. So they're going to feel like, wow. Say my name, say my name. I know. No, sorry. <laughs> I couldn't help it. <laughs> like, it was just right there for the taking. Anyway. It was like a disclaimer commercial break. Um, yeah. <laughs> 
I love that. Where do you get, where do you find this custom brand tissue? I mean, yeah, you just, do you just Google custom brand tissue paper and then you can I mean, just have your logo on it? Yeah, you nice. absolutely that can. Yeah. Um, it's really that easy. There's like tons of uh, small businesses and sites where you can get all that stuff. It's just, oh, I love, I love that just that custom touch point. And so they feel like, wow, this is like a really luxury brand. Like they have mm-hmm. their stuff everywhere. It's consistent. It's high quality. And so that's like my thing. Those are my two like surprise gifts. And then also I say they're not going to get their images anywhere between six to eight weeks. And I want to give them their images within four weeks. So that's not amazing. Only- oh my God, Laura, that's amazing. It- it's so rare for me to hear that because I do, I say five weeks and they get them to in three or four. So yeah. like, I what? love hearing that. And that's like, something I'm so passionate about. And I think we should raise the standards in the industry because I don't think it's fair for couples to wait like three months, two months, just because photographers don't have their systems in place or all of that. Right. And oh yeah, like, so I think that is so powerful that you do that as well. Um, so good job. <laughs> and the two Why gifts, <laughs> the two gifts are so sweet. Like the, I love the initial um, what's it called? The initial like box Mango? of exactly yeah. Oh, yeah. what they would love, like coffee, candy, chocolate, which one? Like that's, that's incredible. And that you have your virtual assistant put that together. Also very smart. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just makes sure. And as soon as they pay me, so like when they make that initial, re- like pay the retainer, I'm like, send it out right now. Like yeah. they need to have that that like because let's be real we all get buyer's remorse we buy something we're like oh my god was there something better and Mm -hmm. you know especially when you make a huge investment you're like okay you know let's do this and then they get a gift you know a week or two later and it's like oh my god we made the best decision she's the best so exactly there's so many touch points that were met there you know and so they know like okay she really does want to shoot our wedding she um bought me gifts that i actually wanted you know (laughs) yeah um God forbid. And you're right about the standard because I feel like, um, I mean, it maybe, and I'm trying not to pull shade on videographers, but I know like some videographers give the video back in like six months or something like that. And I'm like, yo, a year. <laughs> outsource yeah. it. If, if yeah. you can't meet the expectation, it's okay. You don't have to do it all. Like you can outsource that. And I mean, you know, you're the queen of that. Um, but I just know that if I'm not good at something and I'm going to put it off or I have a lot on my plate, just pay the couple, whatever hundreds tens of dollars to just make sure that it's taken care of and your client is taken care of. Cause as much yeah. as people say, Oh, well I'm overwhelmed and I booked this many weddings. I'm like, that's not your client's fault. Okay. You take care of your business. You step in as a CEO and do what needs to be done. Sorry. I just got, yes. like, I got like, so <laughs> I went straight business minded, but that's just how I think. I'm like, okay, that's not their problem. Like this is a business. Okay. Yeah. This is not like a side little gig. And it's like, Oh my gosh, let me wait. Like I paid her $10 to do my photos. I should be patient. Like, no, you are a business. If you're accepting money and you're accepting a lot of money, the least you can do is meet their expectations or supersede them. Attention fellow wedding photographers and fellow wannabe wedding photographers. Tell me if this sounds like you. You're scared of missing key moments on wedding days. You feel pressured to create photos that are quote unquote, Pinterest perfect and Instagram worthy. You're nervous about all the different lighting scenarios that are out of your control and you're not sure how to handle them. You're confused on how to balance creating beautiful imagery while also capturing authentic moments and emotion. And you're worried about being in people's way way too often. If you're like, hells yeah, Sarah, you read my mind, then I'm here all excited and bushy tailed. Yes, I had to throw in the squirrel reference to let you know that I've created something for you that will help you become a confident wedding day storyteller in just two weeks. It's an online program that I created just for you called Intuitive Storytelling, and it's officially out and ready for enrollment. I want you to take a moment and imagine for a second what life would be like if you knew how to be at the right place at the right time on wedding days, So you can catch those key and in-between moments. You got emails back from your clients saying, you were the best freaking decision we made for our wedding. You also knew how to confidently create strong storytelling photos that people felt emotionally connected to. And you finally felt like an actual fly on the wall, aka people don't stare into your camera all day anymore. 
Well, it's all possible because I consistently experience these things myself. And now I want to help you make these possibilities become your reality. Are you all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed right now too? Again, had to throw in the squirrel reference, you know me. So listen up. You can get started on learning all my tips and tricks of how I document wedding days as soon as today. You can go to saramonica.com forward slash storytelling for all the deets and instructions on how to grab your copy of the course. You'll have lifetime access and you can go at it at your own pace along with a private community of other like-minded photographers that are on the same journey as you are. With intuitive storytelling, you'll be able to learn how to confidently storytell like a pro on wedding days in just two weeks. So what are you waiting for? Uplevel your storytelling game this wedding season so that next year you'll be watching your inbox filling up with even more inquiries. Hello referrals from this year's clients. So again, head over to saramonica.com forward slash storytelling and sign up now. I cannot wait to see you in there. And I strongly believe that if you invest in their experience first and foremost, then you will be taken care of in the long run because those referrals that are going to be so strong um, are what going to keep you thriving in your business. Because actually I keep, I have stats of all of my leads and where my where I book, where my bookings come in from the most. And usually it's Instagram and word of mouth. Mm -hmm. But what I've noticed, I even have stats of like what my average sale is from Instagram for a wedding booking. Well, my average sale is for um, word of mouth and people like past clients that have recommended me are the highest by far average sale. So if there is, if you take such good care of your client and yes, maybe you spent $70 $70 on something where initially that $70 is like, Ooh, I don't know. That's you thinking short term of just that $70, but you're not thinking of what the investment of the $70 will bring you. Maybe mm-hmm. when you raise your ra- rates the next year or the following year, then that person, even though your rates are higher, will be like, well, it was a recommendation and it was such a high recommendation that we're going to go with you anyway. Mm-hmm. That $70 can easily turn into $600 by maybe how much you raise your rates by or, or anything like that. So yeah. And, and yeah, I love that you said, um, (laughs) what's it called? Like, it's not their fault that you're overwhelmed or you're busy or this or that. The last thing you ever, ever want to do is make your clients feel guilty for you being busy for creating a service for them. That is something that breaks my heart when I see on Instagram. And I've seen it a lot this year now, especially with the quote unquote wedding boom, right? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. of photographers being like guys bear with me like I, I'm, I'm just catching up like I'm sorry if everything's late right those posts on on I, IG stories right I see them yeah. so often and I am someone who I'm a very understanding person and so it's like I understand why you're posting that and why you got there and I'm not ju- not judging you oh you're a shitty person you're a shitty business owner that you're doing this but I think it's really important for you to break that cycle and learn from this and learn how to have more stronger systems in place. So in the future, you never have to write posts like that because what does that say about your brand? Number one, that you're disorganized. You don't have your systems in place and that you make your clients feel guilty for you having so much work to do for them. Mm -hmm. And my second point, I totally forgot what it was going to be, but, but it was, it's going to be great. (laughs) (laughs) Number two. Oh yeah. Number two, how does that um, show the value that you create in your client experience? How are you able to even ask for a higher rate? Or how do you expect to have more inquiries or more bookings if that's how you're showing up? I, If I saw that post of a photographer I admired, I would be like, something feels off. They're, they're disorganized. What if they end up being disorganized with my wedding and not being up to date with our questionnaires or our images? I'm like, ooh, no, I'm going to find someone else. So that is a big mistake that I see so many people making, not only in their client experience, because they make their actual clients feel guilty, which is the last thing you want to make them feel, but also marketing wise, it's dumb, <laughs> not, a, not a smart move. So um, if I were you guys that are posting that, I would highly suggest that, of course, it's so important to keep your clients in the know of like what is happening to their images, why it's taking longer, send them a freaking personalized email, give them a call, 
mm-hmm. and throw in some kind of like gift or surprise to make it better so that the lasting taste in their mouth is a surprise and not like okay well she just delivered what she said she was going to del- deliver and late right make it t- talk to them one-to-one not on social media <laughs> so I love that you raised that point in a passionate way because I'm also very passionate about it so yeah yeah no, I exactly what I thought. Every time I see it on Instagram stories, I'm like, you just killed a possible potential client's hopes and dreams of hiring you that you have your stuff together. And yeah. so like, even me as a photographer, I can still think in the client's shoes, like if I saw this, I wouldn't hire this person because I would be like, oh, sorry, you're so overwhelmed. Can you X, Y, Z make room for me? And I'm like, I shouldn't yeah. feel guilty to hire a photographer for my wedding day. I should feel like, I should feel safe. I should feel secure. I should feel taken care of that this was the right decision. And so I don't know. I feel like on Instagram stories, people get carried away with this personal brand thing that's being preached and I'm here for it. I'm all about it. Okay. I talk about it myself. But the thing is, is that you have to think about like your page is still kind of a business page. So if you're posting that you're overwhelmed and like you rant or do like reels about clients asking questions or like, oh, don't you hate when a client does this? I'm like, you are literally burning your business. (laughs) trying yeah. to be funny and relatable. Like who is your audience? Is your audience photographers or are you trying to win over your clients? Because just like you, my main referral base is Instagram, my website, Google, word of mouth, all that jazz. So if I'm putting there, um, making fun of my clients and like questions that they have, or talking about how I just can't get it together. Um, why would I want to hire you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's uh, like a hundred percent. I believe in the personal brand and showing up vulnerably, Mm -hmm. but you have to be smart about what, how is this affecting your number one, how your clients feel when they see that. Mm -hmm. And then, right. Then you get like, yeah, I, I, yeah. yeah, Everything that you said, it's, it's tough love guys. We (laughs) we're only saying this because we're, (laughs) we're really passionate about it and we care about all of your guys' success and clearly this is how our tough love comes through. Apparently <laughs> I was like, this is going to be like, can you put a disclaimer on this episode? So nobody... <laughs> it's a little tough love, but you know what? It's, it's needed. And like, and like, I always say this, I reframe failure as a lesson. Like, okay, this, yeah. I didn't fail, but what lesson was I supposed to learn? The lesson today is that everything in the world does not have to be on Instagram for one, for two, she's right. Email your clients and let them know you're getting onto it and thank you for your patience or send them a Starbucks gift card and be like, coffee on me. Thanks so much. There's so many things that you can do to make sure that your tracks are covered versus yeah. being like, oh my gosh, you guys this is ridiculous. I have like a thousand images to do. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Why does Instagram need to know that? I don't know. I, I'll get off the box. I'll get off the box. <laughs> Leaving that just to say yeah. is thinking about ways that your personal brand can be tactful. Can it be more like make sure that you're bringing across the personal brand, but as well as like, even though you are being relatable, don't be so relatable to where you're not seen and respected as a business owner. And that's like where the lines get blurred a little bit. So like I share my kids, I shared that I think mentally we all took a hit from COVID We're all just now getting out of that mindset of, oh my gosh, what the world is on fire, which I mean, it still probably kind of is at this point, but let's be real. Like we all got to get back up and kind of pick our own feet back up and either be the light or Mm -hmm. keep our mouth shut. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so back to client experience. (laughs) Yeah. Actually with you saying that there's one thing that I actually want to want to share that has helped me understand how to show up vulnerably but in a way where you are the light in on social media Mm. so because we all go through shit ups and downs and one thing that I've learned is don't share the dark of how you're feeling in the moment where you haven't learned the lesson or you haven't learned how to grow from it yet because what happens that there is it's like it becomes a heavy piece of content for people to um you know, read or take in and it could bring down their vibration. And instead, I'm pretty sure you want to be more uplifting. You want to be the light. So what I do is whenever I go through crap in my life, I turn to the people that are closest to me, like Rory or my best friend, Agnes. And that's where I go through and I, you know, learn how to heal myself through that chapter. And then once I've learned the lesson, once I figured out how to how I healed from it and how I grew from it, that's when you can share those parts that are 
vulnerable that are human experiences that you can help other people feel less alone, but you end up sharing some kind of lesson or growth tip that can actually help people instead of just complaining and bringing other people down as well. So if you do want to show up that way, that is kind of my piece of advice that you want to share like the healed wound and not this, not when it's still like scabbed or like a full on wound. So I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Client experience. So I did also want to, <laughs> I love these, this, these are powerful, important tangents. I did want to ask because I love everything you mentioned, but when it comes to a wedding day or in a session, um, is there something that comes to mind for client experience of how you make them feel and how you make their friends and family feel that you love to incorporate? Oh my gosh. Obsessed. I just did a podcast episode on this like yesterday. So it's all fresh. Okay. So my, my wedding day approach is I come in and I'm either listening to content where I can be inspired and feel like that. I have that creative freedom to do whatever I want on the wedding day. Also just keep me in that wedding day mindset. So um, that helps for me to get, to stay focused on the wedding day and also keep me in the right mindset. Like, all right, let's do this today's wedding day. Cause I mean, your whole day is gone. So this is all wedding day focus. Yeah. And so when I get there, I come in, I greet the bride. Wow. You're gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Are you excited? Are you nervous? Are you scared? This is great. Let me take the details. I'm going to style them real quick and then I'll get back and we'll do some candids. So I already come in with the presence of a warm presence um, and just be like, oh my gosh, like, hey, your wedding bestie's here. Everything's taken care of. Let me go do my job in the corner while you get your makeup fixed and let's do this. You're getting married, you know? And if they have a first look, then I'm like hyping her up, like in the car, like, yes, yes. Oh my God, he better cry when we see him. Or we're going to ask for the receipt back, you know, all that great stuff. Just like throwing in jokes and making sure that everything's like lighthearted and just feels good um, without the stress, even if there is stress in the background. And I've had clients actually post that in reviews like oh my gosh Alora's presence when she came in the room was just so joyful and just bright it was raining all day and I was looking out the window and I was depressed like literally she was looking out the window when I came in I was like girl you getting married like we just get umbrellas and she's like you're right clear umbrellas are trendy let's do it you know <laughs> so I feel like it's just important to think of if you can if your mind can't get there to constantly think positively Maybe think of worst case scenarios in ways that you can respond and bring them that light and also the confidence that they hired the right person because you're going to be with them the entire day. So how are you going to set that expectation that they have um, and supersede it? Oh my gosh, I love all that because something that is very interesting in reviews and how and testimonials from clients and even just emails that you get back after you they, you send off the images, right? Don't you find that so often they talk about how you made them feel mm -hmm. and like the photos are also thrown in there. Like we love the photos too, but like a lot of the time is you just feel so comfortable and at ease and blah, blah, blah. So I think that is so key is what you just said is like, bring the light, even if there's stress. And on top of that, I think that will also help them open up in front of you with like showing up more authentically or at ease in front of the camera. Do you find that like that it's like easier for them to show up like in front of your camera just in yeah. a more authentic way? Yeah, I feel like um, when you bring like you set the tone like in everything, like in a coaching call and a mentorship. And, and when you greet somebody and you give a firm handshake, they're like, OK, this person is serious. They're not weak. And you ever get like that weak handshake or someone's oh, yeah. like, <laughs> you're like, OK, I <laughs> that's feel. weird. I never know how to what to do. Let me just take this royal hand and shake it. Um, so, like you said, the tone, everything that you do when you when you come in and you enter a room, you bring in that presence with you. So, for me, like when I bring that in, my clients know they they feel like I feel like they breathe a sigh of, sigh of relief. Like, oh my gosh, we don't have to be uptight. Like, she's fun. We can laugh a little bit. This isn't a super like one two three pose thing. Move on to the next location. Like, I can do fun things. I can have fun. Like, um. This is a safe space. I hate saying it all the time, but mm -hmm. <laughs> it, like, this is a safe space and we're going to have so much fun. Like this is, it's not just, um, a client business relationship. And that's like the furthest from what I ever want to bring. I want them to feel like they have like that wedding day bestie, but also professional person who knows what they're doing. You can trust me. You can respect me, but at the same time, like I'm kind of a great time. Um, and so when you bring that presence, they, they get to like relax. And I think that's great. But when you were talking, I remembered, um, 
but Maya Angelou quote where it was like, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And so that I feel like is the most important part of client experience. That is it in a nutshell. Like how can you find ways and little touch points and adding a little brand touch here and there to make sure that they feel X, Y, Z, taken care of, seen, heard, treasured. I don't know, whatever, whatever you can think of that will make them want to rave about you and, and be thinking that even when you're going about purchasing and putting things together, like, okay, this is going to be great. They're going to love this. Like you said, sending them an email right around the time you think they're going to have a question. Should I be asking something right now? Don't worry, girl. I sent that email yesterday. Check your inbox. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah. And okay. For someone that maybe is still trying to learn how to show up confidently on a wedding day with their presence, right? In a room. Cause I feel like I like I've perfected now that now to the point where I feel like I could just own a room and like set expectations in that and that way of like being that energy that you want to that you want to have and bring just like you just did. Right. But initially years ago, I was like, what if I shouldn't be this loud? What if I shouldn't just, you know, show up this way and be seen, right? So what would you say to someone who is still kind of feeling terrified of like showing up and confidently like changing the, like not even changing the vibe, but setting the expectation that, hey, it's okay for us to have a fun, upbeat time and you can do, be free, do whatever you want to do. Like, what would you suggest to someone who is scared to do that or doesn't know how to do that yet? I think that goes into a mindset thing. That's, that's an insecurity that is like, you know, that, that self-confidence, like you have to have the ability to like pump yourself up and be like, even though I have no idea how this is going to go, we're just going to roll with it, you know? And, and that was another thing. Like I used to struggle with imposter syndrome so much. And now I feel like I'm just an imposter. That's really good at selling myself. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, we, being an imposter means you just have no idea like how something's going to end up, but why don't you just have the fear, but do it anyway, you know? And, but anyway, if, if you really need, like some people really, really need to know all the details they need to like plan for the worst. So if you really, really think that things aren't going to go well, I say old school. Um, do you remember when you used to like have like a Pinterest board of like images that you really wanted to do in the beginning? Um, I, I did that in the beginning. I used to have like images of flat lays before I knew how to style flat lays. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to try this one today. And I'm going to actually come a half an hour earlier. So that way I have more time to play around and it's not at the client's expense, or, um, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to try these prompts and I have them like on my phone screenshot, or I have it in my notes that way. Like if we get on a, if we're at a crunch for time, like usually we have 25 to 30 minutes to really get amazing images. I can do that so good now. Like, let me tell you, I can make fifth <laughs> poses out of five because you just learn after a while. Yeah. But also giving yourself grace that like, if you don't lack and you don't fail, you don't, if you don't make the mistake, you're never going to learn the lesson. So, I mean, I keep saying that, but it's like practice makes progression. It's not. Yes. Perfect. I love that you said that practice makes <laughs> progress because yes. perfect doesn't exist. It's an illusion. <laughs> Yep. It is. It's not. And like, I mean, we want to look perfect, like perfect. We want to be seen as a professional, but also you can be human. You're not a robot. And so yeah. if you, if you give them that grace and you come in as like a raw vulnerable human, I think that the clients are going to give you as much grace and probably don't even know where you're struggling as much as you know, where you're struggling because they don't know the industry. So we are always so much more harder on ourselves than other people are on us. Yeah. That's very true. And something that comes to mind for me to give advice to that person that's like scared shitless of like showing up in the energetic way you want to show up, whatever that energy is. Um, something that helps me a lot is think of the be, do, have kind of way of being. So you basically have to ask first, you have to be the person that is already that way. Like if you envision your future self being like, I can show up into a walk into a room confident and like bring the energy, right? Mm -hmm. You have to ask yourself, what would a person like that do? Mm -hmm. And then you have to do that. And then that's when you have that in your reality. So if you just think of those like be, do, have in that order, what do I have to, how, who do I have to be in order to do that thing? Okay. I have to be confident. Okay. How do I be confident? I just have to 
freaking fake it in this moment. Whatever. I'll just fake it. <laughs> you walk into the room. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I am here to. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. <laughs> You know what? Next wedding, which is for me in May. Holy crap. Wow. Then I'm going to be a mom. Oh, my God. I'm yes. just going to walk in. I'm going to be like, hello, everybody. <laughs> That's what came out now. Oh, my gosh. I had a friend who actually, um, when she had her kids, she had her kids strapped with her during the wedding days because she's a what? great super mom. And I was like, so did wow. you like, go to the bathroom and nurse like <laughs> before the ceremony started? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Like doing that accent and having your baby on like those little carriers. <laughs> I am oh, here. Wow. What if it cries during in the in the middle of like a situation? Oh yeah, I know. Right. Well, I don't know. I I didn't ask that question. I should have asked that question. Like, so how is it so quiet? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> but newborn stage, they don't really cry as much. They sleep yeah. like so much. After wow. that, it's all downhill. So <laughs> enjoy them snu- enjoy the snuggles while you or have uphill, them. depending on how the perspective you have. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh. Oh my so gosh. Fun. Okay. So now let's talk a little bit more because I think you and I both believe we're totally aligned on this. Laura, we're, we are aligned. Oh um, <laughs> I believe that client experience and systems go hand in hand, just like you mentioned right in the mm-hmm. be- very beginning. So is there a system of yours that comes to mind that you feel you have perfected? It's a well-oiled machine it's kind of like on autopilot, it works itself where it consistently delivers that same experience to each of your clients that, you know, you feel has strengthened your client experience. Oh my gosh. Yes. Um, so when my business took off and I had a newborn, I did not have a CRM at first. And so Google Gmail, what was it? And DocuSign could only hold up for so long to the point where I, um, I signed up with HoneyBook. Um, and so when they inquire, there is usually an automated email, an automated email sent where it says, Hey, just want to let you know when I'm not out chasing my kids and when I'm not behind, you know, a camera, um, I will get back like to your message within like 24 to 48 hours. So that kind of set the expectation, like, okay, like if I don't get an answer right away, then like, it's okay because she told me when she'll get back to me or that lets them know that their, um, their inquiry was received at the same time. So I have that. And then, um, I have a whole set of emails that are sent out some that I approve and then some that are automatic during, um, the entire, I guess the entire timeline that I've had the client. Um, and yeah, it works out like you can do a workflow in HoneyBook. And so you can have all these email templates. And if you have them in canned email, which if you don't know, you can have canned emails in Google if you don't have a CRM, but just transfer those over and then have them send at a certain time. And I mean, you won't, you can set it and forget it. That's like my favorite thing in the world is to be able to automate and outsource something to where I'm not thinking in the middle of the night. Oh my gosh. Did I said their inquiry? Am I paid? Have I been paid for this wedding that I'm going to, you know, all these crazy things that I, these are real questions I had. Like, I think I did a wedding and was not paid. And I was like, Oh no, these are real questions. Can you please sign this contract? And they're like, (laughs) no. Um, Luckily I charged like, you know, like nothing. I think it was like a hundred bucks for that. But anyway, I learned from that failure. I had a lesson that you need to have things either automated or make sure that they're taken care of ahead of time, because you're not always going to remember every single client to send them 50 different emails to make sure that all the touch points are met and your client's client experience is amazing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love that answer. Highly recommend CRM to anyone who has, doesn't have one yet. So, uh, Laura, you this HoneyBook. I use Pixify. I have, I've literally used Pixify for nine years now, pretty much the whole time. So I have nothing to compare it to, but I haven't switched out because I've been happy, but yeah. yeah, I, do you do the same thing where as, uh, as soon as they, um, book with you, you set up those emails, like you schedule them out, like, and then it's done. That's your set it and forget it. Do you do it upon booking? Like per client? Yeah. So for example, every single time my uh, wedding client books me, I send them the contract and invoice via Pixify. And then at the same time, because I know they're booking me, I set up, I schedule three questionnaire emails that are going to be sent out like 
you know, eight months in advance, five months in advance, two months before the wedding. And then it's like set and forget it done. Do you do the same thing? Okay. So with HoneyBook, um, there's just an automated workflow. So that's already set. And then once the client inquires and once the first retainer is paid, everything else will just automate afterwards automatically. So Got I, it. It's okay. Set so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's the whole powerful part of it. Yeah. And that's the beauty of it is like, you've already predetermined what can, what experience they want to have. And now it's just set up and good to go. And every single client is going to have that. And then it makes your job so much easier because instead of your brain being so filled up with all these five minute tasks and worrying and trying to remember if you did everything, you get to be creative. You get to have more energy to shoot or to actually do something for yourself, which will re-energize or fill your cup. Right. So mm -hmm. yeah, that is that is one of the best things I've set up to. Okay. So how about this, Alora? when you feel stuck on solving like a system problem in your business of like, you have a workflow, but you keep getting stuck in this one spot or like, it's not as efficient as it could be. Um, what do you, what do you do? Do, are there some sort of questions you ask yourself or how do you go to solve that problem to make it more smooth in the future? If it's something that I'm putting off, like client gifts, I feel like it was just like, all right, Lord, now you got to look at this questionnaire and you got to put together a client gift and all these other things. If I know that I'm going to put it off or I know that it takes a lot of time for me to do it and I'd rather be spending that time doing something else, I outsource that to my VA, um, which I feel like you know way more about because <laughs> like you are the outsourcing queen. But um, I know that the two things that are most important to me in terms of like a client experience is making sure things are either outsourced or automated. And then of course, any areas that I feel like can be improved or if I get clients asking me questions, I feel like that's what it is. Like, hey, like, is this, you know, how do we go about doing the album? And I'm like, all right, I have this album email and never sent it out. Let me just judge it up and tailor it to the client and let them know they can pick like their album cover, um, their foil type and, you know, their, their color and all the other great stuff and make sure that is set to go so that once um, the, the project is completed, then that email will send out like, hey, it's time to get going on your album. Let's get this set up. And so um, definitely realizing if there are holes in anything, then that means, which is fine, um, that you need to make adjustments and find ways to make sure it's more seamless. I feel like a workflow might not ever be done, really. I feel like there's always <laughs> ways, like when you raise your prices or when you add new things, that you're going to have to make um, changes to your workflow as well. So I definitely say like just being aware of things that could be done more efficiently and also be aware of the things that you don't want to do that are manual that you can outsource to somebody else. I love that. Yeah. And that's a great point of like, anytime you realize you're getting a similar question from clients, it's like, Ooh, there's a hole in your workflow where you could be answering that along the way. Yeah. So smart. Um, okay. What, I feel like we talked about this earlier <laughs> in our little soapbox rant, but <laughs> is there a, is there a client experience? No, no, that you're like, that would be something that you should not do during either a wedding day or before a wedding or a session or after. Hmm. Okay. Well, I know one that bothered me when I seen somebody else do this is like, leave the wedding day without saying goodbye to your clients. <laughs> just like, Hey, see you later. Oh, it's yeah. Yeah. And I don't know. I'm just kind of like, I like to check in and make sure there's no other photos that they want because sometimes it happens. Mom will be like, yeah. Hey, 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 I, my mom <laughs> wants this photo. We got to get this photo before you go because like their wedding day, like that's it. Like hopefully that is their yeah. last wedding and like, they aren't going to spend that much money again. So it's like, make sure that there's like no way that you can support them before you guys um, head out. And then also just checking in and saying, thank you. Like, thank you for hiring me. Like, I hope like this was everything you wanted more. Your wedding is gorgeous. You know, all the things, all the compliments. Um, that's just me personally though. I can't leave without saying goodbye unless like, I don't know. I, I haven't seen a situation where my bride was like trash trashed, but if she was on the <laughs> dance floor and she was a little crazy, I was like, all right, I'll just send her an email. Um, but usually I, I check in and say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> or if the groom is like somewhere passed out and the bride is no yeah but either way you have to say goodbye to one of them because you have to check Somebody. in you have to be yeah. like do you is there anything else you need you want oh, yeah. like a hundred percent okay that's a good one okay 
And um, what's a yes, yes? <laughs> what would be a great yes, yes in the client experience okay. at any point? Well, um, I think checking in, honestly, though, like even though you do have a workflow, um, I I don't know if this is a no, no or a yes, yes. I feel like I'm doing mommy <laughs> talk right now. Um, but I know that like some clients like to have like that that point of contact, like your phone number, like the day of or whatever, so that they can contact you versus emailing you. I used to forget to do this, but now I'm like, here is my phone number. Like if you need anything, let me know. Or if a uh, so many times, and plus I'm in a downtown Detroit. So like everything is like in the city and they probably have like a, you know, a shuttle or a bus or something like that. So I need to know if there's any location changes. Like, Hey, if you decide you don't want to go here, can you just text me? Let me know that way I'm not sitting there like a, I'm on a blind date. Um, <laughs> but also another thing is like, like I said, checking in and then also like sending them an email, like, Hey, how's everything going? Did you like the timeline? Is everything set to go? Do you have any questions? Do you want to hop on a call before? I used to have brides that would get anxiety and they're like, I have to meet for coffee right now. And then I'm like, the wedding timeline is completely fine. It's beautiful. <laughs> but she just wanted that reassurance and just like my presence to be able to let her know, like, we need to make time for this or we need to get rid of this. Um, and also make time for magic hour because the best time of the day, let's be honest. Um, but yeah, so just, I mean, I don't know. It's like another touch point for me in terms of well, customer service. Yeah. It's so funny. So many things you mentioned in that point, I'm like, just give me like boundary anxiety. Cause I, <laughs> I don't give out my phone number. That's my boundary. Like I know it could be shocking to some people, but it's like, I just don't want communicate. I want communication to be organized all in one place, email. And if they ask me for it, where it's like, which they actually, funnily enough, maybe only one couple a year will ask me for it because otherwise they just feel like everything is taken care of. Um, I'll be like, okay, fine. But just so you know, this is just for the wedding day, just because I have a boundary where I use my cell phone only for personal communication. Mm -hmm. um, and just so that you're well taken care of, all our conversations are organized in one spot. Um, and I mentioned the benefit to them, right? You always want to make sure to mention the benefit to them. And I don't do in-person meetings or calls or meetings with couples. I just have everything pre-answered in those emails. I have everything pre-set up. So I, I have to, so that I can have that space and so that um, I save time as well. Because if we're shooting on weekends and evenings for engagement sessions and then working during the day, when are those meetings happening on top of all of that, right? So just something to keep in mind, two different perspectives, right? Because I strongly believe in designing a business that works for you. And if you are a people person and you're extroverted and you love, you want to meet your clients for coffee and like talk about the timeline in person that lights you up, do that, make that part of your client experience, right? If you're someone like me that I need my space to feel energized, to show up on your wedding day and like, I'm like, I need my space a little bit to be able to like give, if that makes sense, then you can do that too. There's a way to figure it out. So um, yeah, two different perspectives there, which I love. <laughs> and you're, I mean, you're in, you're in, would you say you're an ambiover, ambiovert? Am, ambivert. Yeah. <laughs> Did I say ambiovert? It's like, oh my God, this is transformer. <laughs> Um, yes, Am yes, it's ambivert. Okay. Yeah. So it's like, I can, I can be out and about like at least two days a week, but the rest is like for me, um, extroverts can hang out every single day and not get burned out. I get burned yeah. out. So, but, um, I mean, that was like back in 2019. So I don't do, <laughs> I don't think anybody has the time anymore to do in-person coffee meetings and stuff like that. So for me, it'll be a quick, like 30 minute call. Um, if they really need it. But now that I'm working more with wedding planners, I don't necessarily have to do that as much anymore. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking for people that are just starting out and they don't have wedding planners and they don't have all those other things, they might want to um, see ways that they can kind of go out and go above and beyond. But personally, like I said, it's really tailored to yourself, the way that your business and life is set up. And I've had, like I said, I've had friends that would like go out to eat with their clients and that gave me anxiety. Cause I'm like, how do you be, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So, um, but yeah, I love it. I love the two different perspectives. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, this is such a great chat. Oh my gosh. Um, I feel like listeners got so many ideas and, you know, ways of like thinking of how to develop their own 
client experience and also tips and different ideas like I'm like hmm branded tissue paper hmm. <laughs> personalized box in the beginning like I send a little I send like a note and a gift card but I'm like hmm personalized box that sounds nice <laughs> Now I sound like Sean Connery. I don't know why. <laughs> and I feel like there's never a gift that's like not good enough either because just the thought. The like thought honestly. that counts. Yeah. I mean, you know, like the best of the great and the best, you know, Jasmine Starr just used to do like a, a card, a handwritten card. And it was like, thank you for hiring us. Like you won't regret it. We're so yeah. thankful. You know what I mean? And like- That's literally what- where I got that idea. So I love that you said that. <laughs> Stop it. Oh my no, God. seriously. She, I, I remember like eight years ago, I'm like, Jasmine Starr, she's my idol. I learned so much from her. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's so crazy. We're so like, it started to creep me out at this point. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So, I mean, anything that you can do like, and within your budget, within like your, your, you know, whatever your creativity, it just yeah. make it your own. Um, as long as they feel taken care of, they're going to yeah. rave about you. It doesn't totally. matter if you spend a thousand dollars in their client gift or not, which is ridiculous by the way. Totally. But, you know, <laughs> things to keep in mind. <laughs> totally. Okay, Laura. So let everybody know where they can find you on Instagram, on your podcast, and also tell us about your educational resources that you have available. Yeah. So my podcast is Align with Laura, which Sarah so lovingly said that we are aligned (laughs) and that (laughs) was coming from a place. No. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So that is my podcast. Um, And I like talking about like systems and just like ways that you can do more for less. And we are kind of similar in that way. So it's kind of funny. Our podcast might be kind of similar, especially because I think we both like talking about mindset and stuff, self-help stuff too, Yeah, (laughs) because we both dream of being life coaches one day. Um, (laughs) But speaking of, um, yeah, my Instagram is Rochelle, not Rachel with two L's. (laughs) It's Rochelle, And then um, I will be launching a group coaching in January. I'm not sure when this is going to go live, but if you missed it, you can sign up for the wait list. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be four months. And I'm pretty sure next time I launch, it's either going to be six or 12 months because I already know that I'm going to miss it once it's over. Um, But we're going to be tackling things like mindset, branding, marketing, and also client experience and workflow. So it's going to be super, super just, I don't know, it'll transcend your business. It's everything that you need to know to start, grow, and even scale your successful business. And that will be kind of like the bonus stuff that we have coming on. So if you would like to be in on that, there should be a link below to join. And I cannot wait to see you there and chat with you more. Awesome. I shall put that link in the show notes. So if you guys are wondering where the hell the show notes are, because a lot of people are like, but where are these show notes? Are they up in the universe somewhere? Screaming. Just go to <laughs> saramonica.com forward slash 84. Um, or just in the details of wherever you're tuning into this podcast. <laughs> Perfect. They always say swipe up. And I, I think it's so fun. They're like, just swipe up and the show notes magically appear. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Alora. Thank you for having me. Yay. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and tuning into this episode. If you got value out of it, please feel free to message me on Instagram at Sarah Monica photo. That's Sarah, no H Monica with a K photo to let me know. I get so freaking energized hearing from others that what I've said has had a positive impact on their lives. Also, make sure to hit subscribe to the Shine and Thrive podcast to never miss an episode. I'm so grateful for you and I'm sending you all the productive vibes your way so you have the best week ever.